like it. All right. Hey, it's Scott from Duckworks. We've got a portage pram kit here we're going to start building. And I thought we'd take a moment and go through a quick unboxing. So this is what you would see when uh, we've got everything shipped to you. All the various supplies here and kit. And so here's a couple little transom doublers to start with. And, and these are called knees. They help tie in different parts of the boat. And then a bunch of other neat little things. Here's parts of the jig for um, keeping the shape proper when we're building. And we're going to be gluing that up here this morning. We've got a doubler for the transom, doubler for the bow. We won't touch the innels or the gunnels. We will probably glue up skegs today. We've got some puzzle joints that we're going to glue up. There's a few tiny puzzle joints, which are a little finicky. It's just a single, you know, it's such a narrow joint, it's easy to get it wonky, so there's a little bit of alignment you need to pay attention to when you're doing that. Whereas, you know, this wider puzzle joint, it basically is self-aligning, and your job is just to make sure that it's even on the face and that you've got enough glue in there. So, yeah, that will end up going like that. You can see how that will fit together nice. And there are a lot of different ways to do this. Kits are commonly done with a puzzle joint. I feel like that. Four millimeters thick. That's less than a quarter of an inch. Yeah, so along with your kit, you're gonna get a gallon and a half of epoxy, resin on my left, hardener on your right, you can choose slow, medium, or fast. Um, our shop is reasonably warm and I wanted the process to go fairly quickly. So we're going to use medium. Um, along with the kit, you're also going to get a pound of wood flour. Um, used for fillets, predominantly glue ups as well. Um, lends strength to a joint. You've got your epoxy pumps. Fit nicely on here. So you can get your ratio of two to one accurately, repeatedly. Um, two little kits of fillet sticks. Most of the time you're gonna be using the little, the smaller. Got some mixing cups, reusable. The epoxy doesn't stick to it. So if you, you can clean them out when you're using them, but you can also just let it cure thoroughly and then you can pop it off and it'll be like another little cup. Some disposable chip brushes. Some mixing sticks, tongue depressor style. Um, it's not uncommon for me to cut off the end of those to get them kind of square so that you can get into the corners of cups a little bit better. A squeegee, also um, reusable. It's nice and flexible without being too flexy. Be used like this. Um, clean them up each time, and if you don't, again, like the cups, you can pop the epoxy off of it. Um, but you should be able to use this throughout the entire build. Uh, zip ties, the modern version of copper wire for stitching glue. Um, yeah, stitching glue. So this is a method of construction called stitching glue. Good question, really. Um, you basically stitch the plywood together, and then you, what I think of as like tack weld, along the length of the planks or the whatever it is you're gluing. And then eventually you pull the stitches after it's all cured and then run your fillets all around and glass it. Uh, and then you get some gloves. All right, so this edge, we don't want to alter the shape at all. We just want to get rid of those kind of loose fibers, right? So if you can, if I do that, you can see them standing up. Yeah. We're just looking to just get rid of those loose fibers. So just touching this edge, real light touch, working your way along it. I think you can do the sandpaper now. OK, 
Okay, go along it to the right to left. Yeah. Cosmos. I think that's pretty defuzzed. What do you think? Good. Okay. All right. So the curve is still the same, but we don't have the fuzzies. All right. So um, we're getting ready to glass the interior of the bottom planks, and you'll notice that it's two pieces, uh, which commonly means that a boat has some shape to the bottom, a little bit of a V. Uh, not so with the Porridge Pram, it's a flat bottom boat. All right, so um, the critical things here, one, obviously we wanna make this joint down the middle disappear. So we're gonna get it firmly uh, together and then also that we're not misaligned fore and aft. So I'm just gonna put a, a level back here to give us something to positively bump into. Get these following. Actually, Beth, do you want to jump in? Um, maybe the far end? Okay. And so I'm going to pull these up against the level. If you get them together. Yep, good. And maybe just we put our hands down on it. Get a little bit of tape to hold us in place. Some poor tape jobs. So you, you could also conceivably throw a stitch in here. Um, there's not a stitch hole for it pre-drilled, so I'm not, um, but you certainly could do that. And since we're going to be glassing the other side, we want this joint to, thank you Beth, to be basically um, epoxy proof. We're going to add a little bit of packing tape to the back side. Beth is squeezing everything ahead of me so that we make sure that we're not permanently gluing in a gappy joint. Packing tape is temporary, will go away once we're ready to flip and glass this side. So we're just gonna go back, make sure it's stuck down really well. And the table underneath and the platform we're building on also covered in plastic. Um, I've definitely been a part of building boats where a jig, for instance, is not firmly and fully taped. And um, yeah, you have a surprise when you're ready to then take your scamp off the building jig and the building jig comes with the scamp. Um, but that can be fixed. All of this is Im imminently fixable. It's just nice to not have to. All right, so we're gonna flip this. Um, it's taped fairly well along the full length, so we're not, we don't, it's not critical that this goes with like braces or anything, but nicely done. Can work back. You can also see that we're gonna have some reference points that are gonna tell us important information later, likely location of bulkheads would be in my assumption. And then we've got bottom bow, a lot of labeling on these parts, which is really helpful, um, particularly when you first unbox everything and you're just trying to figure out what's what. All right, so we've got the bottoms, the bottom planks laid out, taped together, registered well. We've got the face up that we're going to be fiberglassing and I've vacuumed off any debris. You don't want to get little bits of you know, sawdust or in this case, pet fur. Uh, bonded underneath your glass. If it's something big enough, you'll actually get the glass lifted off away from the, the boat and you get a little pocket of air around it. If they're small, they're just kind of an imperfection that's bothersome and leads to problems in, when you're faring. Um, so it takes uh, just a moment, but it's worth your time to sweep or give a quick vacuum before you go to lay down cloth. Um, and we are going to lay our cloth down dry uh, over this whole surface, get it uh, brushed out, laying nice and smoothly, and then I prefer to apply epoxy for wetting out glass with a roller, particularly when it, I'm working on a kit where I've got all these holes that are necessary for registering um, the next parts that are going to be put on. So I don't want to fill those holes unnecessarily. See this part here, this hole, this will receive a tab. Um, the holes on either side are for zip ties. So then this part will come sit down here and we'll zip tie through it. 
Um, so the better job we do of not filling those up um, in advance of putting our parts together, the better. It just means less work later cleaning off um, glass and hardened epoxy. So, uh, we do want to make sure that we get a healthy amount of epoxy in the seam. Uh, this is our opportunity to tie these two parts together. And um, our best shot is the first shot. Uh, we want the epoxy to run through there, and it will. It will wick through. It is viscous, but um, a joint like that, wood wants to soak it up. So it will find that joint and, um, and work its way right down through it. So we'll just be sure not to be light on our application of epoxy here. But things look good. The planks are both cut out of the same sheet of plywood. You can see the grain pattern follows. Um, so um, they're not uh, uneven in their surface because we can't really apply any pressure to keep this down. So it's, it's nice that everything more or less is following pretty well. By the time I have it thoroughly mixed, it should go pretty much clear. Again, we want a double-sided tape underneath it. Oh, Aurelia.